Importing and flowing text. When you're working with other people, there will be times where they have to give you assets or resources to use in your project, but they may not give it to you in the format that you want. If someone gives you a Microsoft Word document with all the text for a book that you're formatting, you can bring that text into your InDesign document by either kind of copying and pasting it manually from uh, Microsoft Word, or you can import files. So we should already know how to import images, right? You choose File, Place, and then you can place images into your document. But you can do the same with a variety of different types of files. So I'm going to show you two examples. I'm going to import a Microsoft Word document and an Excel spreadsheet. When you import them, it's as simple as choosing File, Place. However, if you just choose File, Place, you may not get things to come in exactly how you want, but you'll at least get all the content that you can then format. If you choose File, and then place and before you select your file and choose OK you hit the option in the bottom left hand corner of the place dialog box that says show import options you'll have more control of how that text comes in so for example I have a little graphic over here this is an Excel spreadsheet and by default if you choose file place and you import all the content from an Excel spreadsheet it will come in as a tab set that you then have to format using uh, the layout menu and tabs if you want, it can come in as a table that looks more like an Excel spreadsheet that then you could modify the table settings. And those are just two completely different things. And so if you wanted to format it as tabs, you can just use the default setting. But if you wanted it to come in as a table, you're going to have to hit show import options and choose the option that says bring it in as a table. You have more options than that too. If the person that gave you the file did a really good job of formatting things in their, let's say, Microsoft Word file, and they've used footnotes and endnotes and, and styles and things like that, you can choose as much of that to come into your InDesign project as you want. So what I like to do, I just think it's easier to clear all those settings and do it myself. But if you know that the person who set up the file did a good job and it's thorough and nothing's going to be broken or missing, you can bring in as many of the formatting options as are available to you in that dialog box. And it actually works for images too. So we didn't cover this a lot when we talked about the images, but let's say you're importing a PDF as pictures and the PDF has 25 pages and you want the 25 individual pages to be pictures in your project, if you hit show import options, you have the option to import every page as an individual image from your PDF file. When you're importing and flowing text, there are a few options that you have. So when someone gives you text, whether you're copying and pasting it or you're choosing file in place, you can import into a pre-existing text frame. So you can do all the design work first. You can use placeholder text and you can say, this is where the text is going to be and then erase it and then fill it in with the text when it's given to you. You can even import into a pre-existing master uh, page text frame. It's a little bit more complicated. Um, you can create text frames on the fly as you're importing. So you can choose file place, choose the file, and then you can click and drag, kind of like you would do if you're placing images. Um, you can let the text flow into its own text frame. So if you choose file place and you just click, it will make the frame, it'll make it the size of your margins and it will kind of flow itself. Um, and you can also let it flow into the margins of the page, of the page by just clicking. Before we jump over to InDesign to show how to import text, I want to show you or remind you of placeholder text. If you are working with a design or you're designing something that's going to have a lot of text but the person responsible for providing the text hasn't given it to you yet, you can fill your frames with what is called placeholder text. Sometimes it's referred to as jibber jabber or if you use, um, we use InDesign, but if you were to use Quark Express it's called jabber. If you need text that mimics the realness of writing a paragraph, um, you can choose the type menu and towards the very bottom of the option, you can fill your frame with placeholder text. Uh, what is good about this is that you can't read it, but it, it comes across like regular written text. If you just hit all the keys on your keyboards, it doesn't look natural because you tend to hit the same keys over and over. You don't get good spacing and things like that. Um, you can use placeholder text to design 
your entire newsletter if you're designing a newsletter or project or flyer and then you can go back and you can say okay well I need a 500 word count for where this article is going to go and a 300 word count for where this other article is going to go.